So let's suppose that we have a 200 gram ball that is spun in a vertical circle on the end of a 0.9 meter long massless rope. Now we want to find the minimum velocity the ball must have at the top of its arc to continue its circular motion. So let's look at our diagram. So we have the ball that is attached to our massless rope that is 0.9 meters long. So this is the radius of our circle created by the pathway. And we want to calculate the minimum velocity at the top needed to continue its motion. In other words, that minimum velocity will create acceleration and our object will continue accelerating, moving in the circular pathway. In other words, according to the laws of motion, the only way our object will continue changing its motion is if a net force acts on our object. So at the top, we're essentially looking for the net force on our object along the y-axis in the vertical direction. So at the top, we have several forces acting on our object. So the first force acting on our object is the force of gravity that's pulling our object downward uh, in the negative direction along our y-axis. At the same time, we also know that our ball is attached to a rope and that rope exerts a, press, a pressure, tension. So we also have the tension in our rope that's pulling our object downward. So both of these directions we choose to be positive. So we choose going downward to be positive so, we want to sum up all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis. So, all the forces acting along our, on our object along the y-axis are two forces. We have the force of gravity and the tension in our rope. Now, this equals, according to the second law of motion, mass times radial acceleration. Remember, our object requires radial acceleration for the motion to actually change, for our object, for our ball to continue in its circular pathway. And recall that radial or centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity of the object squared divided by the radius of our circle. And that's exactly what we write. So we have mass of AR is equal to mass times V squared divided by R. Now, by the way, what exactly does it mean for our object to move in a vertical circle? What that basically means is that we have a force of gravity acting on our object and that means the ball is undergoing vertical non-uniform motion which basically implies that the magnitude of velocity is not constant. The magnitude as well as direction changes as our ball undergoes this vertical motion. So, uh, let's go back to our equation. So we have this equation equals, or these two forces equal this. So let's rearrange our equation and solve for the velocity. So we get the following. So we bring the R over, we divide by M, and we take the radical, and we get the following result. So, now, notice what the tension is. So what exactly is our tension? Well, because we're looking for the minimum velocity, that implies that we have no tension at the rope. At the top, the minimum velocity means that our tension in the rope is zero. We have no tension. In other words, we want to find the minimum velocity such that when we spin at the top, we're going to have no tension in the rope. So this tension goes to zero and we are left with the following equation. So velocity is equal to the radical of R times M times G, M times G simply F of G divided by m, so the masses cancel, and we are left with, this should go away, and we are left with the radical of radius times gravitational constant. So, we know what r is, and we know what g is, and we see that velocity is equal to the radical of 0.9 times 9.8, which is about 2.97. So, 
2.97 meters per second. That's the minimum velocity the ball must have at the top of the arc in order for the ball to continue its circular motion. Now, let's go to part B. Now we want to calculate the tension at the bottom of the arc, the tension that our rope has when our object is at the bottom of the arc, assuming the ball is moving with three times the velocity given in part A. So three times of this velocity, which is uh, 8.91 meters per second. Uh, meters per second. So, Let's draw our force diagram, our free body diagram for our object when our object is at the bottom of our arc. So at the bottom, we still have our force of gravity pulling downward, but now we have the tension in the rope that's pulling upward. So now they're pulling in different directions. So once again, we want to sum up all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis. So the sum of all the forces is equal to, now we choose going upward to be positive, going down to be negative. So the tension in the rope minus the, uh, the force of gravity, and that equals mass times radial or centripetal acceleration, which is the same thing as saying mass times v squared divided by r. So once again, we're solving for our tension, so we bring all the other terms to the right side and leave the tension term on the left side. So we see that the tension in the rope is equal to m times v squared divided by r plus m times g. So our m is three times this value, so it's 8.91 uh, meters per second. Uh, we have to square that. We multiply by the mass. So mass is in kilograms, so 0.2 kilograms divided by 0.9 meters plus 0.2 kilograms multiplied by G, which is 9.8. And we find that our tension in a rope, when our object is at the bottom of the arc, the tension in a rope is 19.6 uh, newtons.